Happy New Year! Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage. Leave a like, because uh, it's just going to be a good year, I reckon. Oh, yeah? Me and Mason... No preamble anymore, no, these no, days. No, just no. leave a like. And me and Mason, we're going to do the whole year, and neither of us are going to die. I'm going to lock that in now, okay? Terrific. Yeah. Huh. So if you were planning on dying, guess what? You can't, Mason. Wow. Have you made a deal with God, Kate Bush style? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> Look, are listen. we trading our lives for somebody else? <laughs> Maybe some of the viewers? It's not about that. It's not about whose lives I've traded or not, okay? Okay, but it's someone who doesn't leave a like. <laughs> They're certainly on the list. I could neither confirm nor deny Mason, but probably. Mm-hmm. Anyways, here's a direct quote from my son regarding the movie Shrek. I hate Shrek. Wow. That's, that's his quote. Huh. And I said... Was this prompted by anything? Or no, just... this was literally out of the blue. And I said, you mean like the movie? And he goes, no, the guy. Huh. He goes, he's gross. The actor who... <laughs> Shrek, the actor who played <laughs> Shrek? He's one of those actors where the, the, the name of the character is the same as the name of the actor. He, he never acted before and they like that. They yeah, make it just, easy on him, you know? Just put it in, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like Mark Jacko Jackson. The Energizer Man. Incredible reference. I love that. That's great. <laughs> Starting off 2023 with impenetrable references. <laughs> Not only local, but local in 40 years ago. <laughs> he played Jetto on The Highway Man. He did. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. He was like the Energizer Bunny, but he was an Australian person. <laughs> he was a man. Yeah, he was a regular man. He's not a regular man. It's not important. <laughs> Your son hates Shrek. He just, out of, yeah. ap- ap- apropos of nothing, just said, I hate Shrek the man. Now, he did actually re-watch this with me to talk about it. He's uh-huh. not going to talk about it. I'm not going to subject him to being on YouTube. But I think all his theories on why he hates Shrek come from that opening montage of him, like, gargling mud and brushing his teeth with bugs and eating eyeballs. Because by the end, he's like... This is great. That donkey's hilarious. Okay, just just before we get into that, mm. I do have. I, I only made one note for Shrek, and it just said, "Where'd Shrek get all them eyeballs? <laughs> Whose eyeballs? He's what eating eyeballs? them. He's yeah. he's putting them in martinis. Because he doesn't seem to be attacking people. Yeah. And yet there are no other ogres, bar one, I guess, in this movie. <sighs> Cannibal Shrek is what I'm saying. Oh yeah. There's going to be a lot of uh, Shrek theories, okay. and a lot of them are cannibal related uh-huh. over the course of us doing these four movies, Mason. Oh, there's four? Yeah. <laughs> what and we're doing all four? <laughs> we're doing all four. I thought you'd be happy. I thought I could skate through two and then... <laughs> okay, but you're saying your son is disgusted by this disgusting man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, as an adult re-watching this, um, you know, I was an adult when it came out. It's not important. Yeah. As, uh, re-watching this, I am like, why do, you, why do you share himself in mud and then get in the water? Does he want? Does he want to be covered in a, a disgusting, crusty layer of mud, or not? Make up your mind, Shrek. That's why I don't like him. His indecisiveness more than his disgusting nature. <laughs> That's fair enough. But you know what? I I generally like this movie. Uh-huh. I think it's it aged poorly, and then I feel like it's aged really well as a result of references. But we'll get into it. The one thing that I really don't like about this movie is I hate how regular people look. And I'm not talking about Princess Fiona. I think they've done a good job to kind of step her out of the uncanny valley. And guys like Farquaad, yeah, he's a horrible little freak with his freak head and haircut mm-hmm. and all of that. He's supposed to be terrible. But I'm talking anytime a regular person rolls in, I'm just like, yeah. oh, awful. I think it's a choice, though. I inter- so so I, I think it's... I thought, it, it, upon the rewatch, that it was more of a like a handling of resources. I felt like right. in terms of how things looked, I thought Shrek looked the best. Yeah. I think then Donkey yep. looked very good. Then Farquaad and then Princess Fiona in human form. I thought she was a little bit, yeah. that face is a little bit stiff. And I thought maybe one of the major issues with this movie, perhaps it improves in the sequels, but this was an era when celebrities weren't generally speaking doing animated voices. Not as much. You'd get and the so occasion. They, and but, so yeah. they didn't quite have a handle on how to do it. Yeah. And they're still doing voice acting like they would be doing regular acting, like a little bit more low key. Mm. And so perhaps uh, the lady. Cam- Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz is perhaps not as animated as she could be. Oh, in her, in okay. Her, in her, in her, she seems a little wooden there. But I thought, again, the, the training was not there at that point. They should have gone to, you know, actual voice actors. Well, the thing about that is as well, they recorded them all separately. Ah, okay. And right. I think for the most part, you can't tell. Like the Shrek and Donkey stuff, mm-hmm. it feels like they're in the same room. Mm. So I think maybe that's got something to, to do with it potentially. What room specifically? Like a laundromat? Yeah, a or laundromat. A... They they <laughs> dropped a bunch of coins on the ground and uh-huh. they kicked all the machines into gear. Yeah. Terrific. Anyway, do you want a bit of the origin of uh, how this came to be? Yes. So Steven Spielberg, uh, he was one of the people who started DreamWorks Animation. And they were going to produce this film as early as 1991. Does that have something to do with the fact that he loves video games? Yeah, he says he loves video games, but has he ever made the movie Ready Player One, Mason? That is absolutely not a thing he's done. (laughs) 
<laughs> Better luck next time, Spielberg. <laughs> Good luck making another movie after the freaking The Fablemans. Yeah. You goose. That love letter to cinema and your parents, which is apparently terrific. I, di- I, didn't, I haven't seen it. I will watch it, Spielberg. I'm sorry. I do want to watch it, okay? Well, too bad. It's never getting a sequel. We're just getting ready to play it too. <laughs> uh, so originally it was going to be hand-drawn animated, as everything was in that era, and it was going to star Bill Murray as Shrek and Steve Martin as Donkey. Interesting. DreamWorks Animation, though, they needed to step it up a bit by the time they got around to making this because they needed a win. It was headed up by Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was over at Disney, and then he did a bunch of DreamWorks stuff, and then more recently he did Quibi. So there's a there's varying degrees of success. Sure, I would yeah. say mostly success. Mm-hmm. More recent, not as much success necessarily. Interesting, but we are talking about Quibi, aren't we? That's true. So We're always talking about it. Mm-hmm. So DreamWorks Animation had made Ants, which was a moderate-ish hit, but it wasn't mm-hmm. as well regarded as A Bug's Life. Also, it starred Woody Allen as an ant, and quite frankly, who the fuck wants to see that? Then there was The Prince of Egypt, which is a terrific movie, but again, it didn't have the return. Also, The Road to El Dorado, which I personally love, again, didn't do well. Then they had Chicken Run, which was stop motion animation, which did okay, but it wasn't like, it wasn't a huge hit. And then they landed on Shrek. So initially they were like, we'll do it stop motion, but that's costly and it didn't seem to work when they tested it. Then they were going to do like a live action blend with animation like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And then DreamWorks hired a motion capture company to help develop it and they wasted a year and a lot of money to realise that that's not going to happen. It was too early days for that. So eventually... They got here. But that wasn't before. The voice of Shrek died. Oh, yeah. So Chris, Chris Farley. Farley, yeah. He recorded 95% of the audio before passing away. I'm an ogre. Doesn't that bother you at all? They considered getting his brother in to finish it, but his brother was, was just like, I can't do this. This is obviously too difficult. So then they brought in Mike Myers, mm-hmm. who was also reluctant initially, where he then did it in his regular accent, then went back and said, no, I think I want to do this Scottish and reportedly it cost $4 million to reanimate a bunch of Shrek's movements. I think that's an exaggerate To make them more Scottish? I guess. Hmm. But I think that's exaggerated, uh, that number. But it did take 20 sessions to then completely re-voice over the character. Mm. But I think that totally works. That was a good decision in the end. I think he's a good Shrek. I agree. I mean, I have nothing else to compare it to, ultimately. but The, the book Shrek, original Shrek? Oh, yeah, book Shrek, original Shrek. But he doesn't talk, really. I haven't read it. I mean, the book itself. The book doesn't talk, doesn't talk to you. It yes. doesn't go, hello, Mason, I'm the book Shrek. Mm. Ben, this must be annoying to animate, <laughs> wouldn't it? This bit. This oh, bit. You're, you're demanding this, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. just put up, just put footage not found. It's fine. <laughs> New year, new ways of getting around us saying stupid things. Just say footage yeah, not found. We don't have it. I also love Donkey in this. But you gotta have three. Stop! <laughs> We've talked about the movie Milan. Mm-hmm. I think the character of Mushu is a strange addition to that movie. Whereas here, because the Shrek universe is just whatever, mm. you know, a donkey that sounds like Eddie Murphy, it's perfect. It's fine. It yeah. totally works, yeah. It did take me a, a, a little while to, to resettle into Donkey because, you know, he's deliberately annoying Yeah, as part of his character. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. the thing about that is it makes him annoying. Yes. So <laughs> That's true. But he's got some heart, which yeah, I like. Yeah, he does. He's got a Donkey heart. Yeah. Actually, do you want some? I've also got a Donkey heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's all my hard drinking back in the day, you know? Now, speaking of Donkey... Because we're going to be doing some Shrek theories, Mason, over the okay. course of these four movies that they made. Okay. And maybe the additional things that they did, Mason. They did a bunch of TV specials or whatever. Oh, they did the karaoke dance party oh, as there, well, Mason. Is there a video game? It's there's, probably, there's so many video, we'll play games, some video games. And probably kart races. No, we're not playing video oh, games, Mason. Oh, oh, somebody's drawn a line in the sand all of a sudden. <laughs> so, in terms of Donkey Origin, Mason... Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's a joke here about Donkey Origin and Don Quixote or something, right? There's something mm. here. Ben, what's this? Ben and Lawrence, what do what is this? Fix this. <laughs> Fix this thing we've said. <laughs> Finish our jokes, please. <laughs> So the idea of Donkey is that he's probably from a Grimm's fairy tale. Donkeys eat Oties. Don't yeah. fix it, Mason. They'll oh, fix it. Fix it. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll delete this in the edit, James. Yeah. Delete that audio. So it's probably from a Grimm's fairy tales uh, compilation, a story called The Donkey, right? Oh, but there's hundred percent hits. Grimm's yeah, fairy tales. Exactly. Edition. Yeah. Okay. So there's one theory that states he's actually a parody of Winnie the Pooh's Eeyore. Well, there is a shot that looks very similar uh, to him, uh, you know, when he hits his lowest point when yeah. Shrek, ain't no, uh, Shrek ain't his friend no more, where he sort of goes, oh, and it's very Eeyore. So maybe that's yeah, it. Yeah, sure. exactly. Maybe it is. And there's another theory that states that he was actually a human that was then 
turned into a donkey. Oh. And that's why he's got all human references. And maybe he's a time traveler because he knows music from the modern day or whatever. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that, though, for a second. Look, right. the, the stuff that has not aged as well. Look, the, I think the fairy tale stuff, delightful. Yeah. I think the, the story of true love's first kiss and all that, I think that's all fun and good for kids and, yep. you know, what have you. And I think... You know, generally speaking, I think the performances are very good. Mm. But yeah, the, the whenever, whenever I, I spent most of this movie just really hoping that nobody broke into a rap, <laughs> and it nearly happens a couple of times. Yeah, Robin, it feels like Robin Hood's going to. I bet you um, loved the Matrix kick though, right? Uh, I th- I'm sure I did at the time. It was incredible at the time. A mere two years after the Matrix, we got a Matrix kick. A law was passed in the US that required every movie from. 1999 onwards to have a Matrix kick in it. And that was right. That was the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, you should know this, everybody. The Supreme Court is actually trying to overturn that rule. And I won't have it, quite frankly. That's right. More Matrix kicks in cinemas. Everybody should dress as Agent Smith and pick it. (laughs) They're local. (laughs) Whoever. Yeah. Whoever local, whoever, yeah. But I think, though, those references now have come around. Oh, you think so? And they've made this like a time capsule. Sure, okay. Right, so initially it's like... Okay, yeah, 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 I can't even think of a reference that they're doing. The Matrix kick. There's a reference, Mason. Wow. And I think now you look at it and it's, you know, it's 20 plus years on and it's like, boy, wasn't this a particular point in cinema? And if you couple that with, I think, the overall narrative, which is very good, and also the animation, which just the, the goose and the water and the mud and the hair, there's so much stuff in this that hadn't been done before. Mm. And look, it doesn't all hold up perfectly, but it's a very attractive movie, Mason. It won the MTV Movie Awards Best Goo Award. <laughs> it probably did. Yeah. But I think I think all of that now works and you know and that's why it's become like, you know, it's a big meme movie. A lot of a lot of people now know this movie from from the memes and people being like, ah, Matrix Kick meme or, or whatever sure. whatever the memes are. It's like when somebody says name a song and you go, <laughs> oh I can't think of a single song. Matrix Kick? <laughs> The song that plays during the Matrix kick scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what do you think about some of the humour, though? Because there's there's some... There's some good gags in this. Well, there's good gags, and there's also, like, legitimately adult jokes in here. Mm. That, I mean, Lord Farquaad, the name, right? Yeah, there's jokes it. like that. Mm-hmm. There's a moment where people are pretty confident when he's in bed looking at the mirror where you see his tiny little erection happening under, the, under the covers. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a thing that's that That's a funny little adult joke. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. But apparently also... Couldn't do that these days. No, I don't think so. I mean, you'd put it in and then people would find it. I, I was going to say later, but immediately, because <laughs> something like this would... If they released a new IP like this now, uh-huh. it would probably go to streaming. Actually, you know what? They would... Fans, modern day fans would probably demand it if you did it these days. They'd be like, More it's part of the canon yeah. that he has an erection. <laughs> what are you going to take his erection away? <laughs> what do you hate, man? <laughs> <laughs> so, all of this humor, though, it was a point of contention between directors Vicky Jensen and Andrew Adamson, who were all for that, and Jeffrey Katzenberg, because he was like, I don't think we, we can get away with this. We're already like lampooning Disney movies, mm. which I think he very much set out to do intentionally mm-hmm. because of his run over it at Disney. Mm-hmm. They also got the Disney lawyers together with the DreamWorks lawyers to make sure there was nothing in here where people wouldn't end up suing uh, each something other. Something like Pinocchio was a little too close to uh, yeah. too traditional Pinocchio. I mean, yeah. luckily they're like, yeah, there is mm. other Pinocchio stories, but yes. When you said jokes, I I, I thought more in the, you know, the little gag where the, the greeter at the town sort of runs through the Oh, runs I like the, that joke. Runs, That's runs, a good through joke. The, runs through the velvet rope and then Shrek just pushes forward. I wasn't really thinking about erections. Okay, you weren't? No. Just to clarify. Yeah. And you're still not? I'm still not, no. Great. Yeah. Are you thinking about green trivia, though? Yes. Now, I just want to clarify, our section on green trivia has been locked in for a while. It's not green trivia because of Shrek. Mm. It's just green trivia, right? Correct, yes. And also, the guy who uh, shouts Rodney, he's back for 2023. Here he is. I mean, he's in a, he's in a swamp, which is very appropriate, but it is a coincidence. <laughs> Rodney! 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 So again, there's so many theories, I'll quickly do one now, right? And it especially gets more complicated and theory related when we get into Shrek becomes a depressed dad and then time travel. Okay. We'll get there. Don't worry about it, Mason. I was not aware you of You will that. have to worry about it. What's but the second? P- Puss in Boots is in the second one? Yes. Not Piss in Boots. That's unrelated. <laughs> it's unrelated. And it's also unrelated to you thinking about erections from mm-hmm. before, isn't yes. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So at the start, do you remember when all the fairy tale creatures are getting gathered up mm-hmm. and we see... Uh, the three bears. Yes. Right? There's the parents and, and the baby, right? Mm-hmm. 
Later in the movie, you see in the swamp that it's just the father and the baby bear. Oh no, mum's and then, dead. That's right. Then you see Lord Farquaad and you He's eating the baby. He's eating the mum. No, you see there's a literal bearskin rug with a bow on its oh, head. Oh no, he killed the mum. But apparently the, the mum comes back in the Shrek in the dance karaoke party, swamp karaoke oh. party. That's not the uh, daddy bear's new wife? That's a great question. Isn't it though? Or yeah. Farquaad killed a different bear? Maybe. I don't know. And said this is what'll happen to you if you don't shape up. <laughs> You better shape up. Mm-hmm. There are actually 36 unique locations in Shrek, which was more than any other computer animated film at the time, which you feel. Like if you watch the first Toy Story, which is an amazing movie, there's like a few rooms and a little bit of outside. Mm. But this really feels like a journey and new locations and new people and castles and weird Disneyland-esque yeah. setups mm-hmm. and all and all of these situations. Sure, I, sure. Yeah, it feels epic in scope and scale, Mason. Oh, it's epic. I agree. It's epic bacon. Speaking of epic bacon, Mason, Go memes on. and such, oh are you familiar with the Shot for Shot remake? I'll put this in because people would have uh, told us otherwise. So I'm telling you. Who made a Shot for Shot remake? Uh, it's called Shrek Retold and it's on YouTube. And it's basically a whole bunch of people got together and just did like scene by scene all the way through. So animated though, not live action. Different versions. Of, oh, It's just a whole lot of everything, Lego? Mason. I don't know. Maybe. I'm not watching it, but no. it's there. It's got okay. millions of views. It'll get more, it has more views and it always will have more Lego views. Lego erection? Lego Lord Farquaad erection? <laughs> That's right. Wow. Wow. That's right. They went all in. They went all in and all out. (laughs) Trek's production was also incredibly grueling. And so DreamWorks allegedly used it as punishment. So anima- Oh no. Yeah. So animators who made mistakes on The Prince of Egypt were reassigned to Shrek. This became known as getting Shreked. You're fucking Shreked, mate, they said. Yeah, that's right. Which is what they'd say in Australia. That's what Mark Jacko Jackson would say. Yeah, absolutely. I know I can't take that out, can I? (laughs) I was thinking about taking it out, but now I can't. Too late now, yeah. Uh, Also, this has never been confirmed, but Shrek looks like Russian-born French wrestler Maurice Tillet. Though, again, this has never been confirmed. Though, if you look at this guy... Yeah, that's Shrek. That's just a man who who is Shrek. He looks like Shrek, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shrek. And that's Shrek. But it's not all Mason. And there is that wrestling scene, obviously. Yeah. And there's a moment where he does a little bit of a Canadian kind of like a hockey. Oh, he does too. Hockey hockey slide there, you know. Do you think that's a nod to hockey? Yeah, it's a nod to hockey, I reckon. Great, that's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know Mike Myers is Canadian hockey, everybody. Don't, don't, don't. (laughs) You know Mike Myers is Canadian and hockey. I know people are going to be like, well, actually, no. This is a year of everybody just not doing that. Oh We're we're just not going to do that this year. You might have a really obvious fact, but that's what Green Trivia is for. I put the obvious facts in there so I don't get them parroted back at me. All right? I think people have forgotten that, Mason. This video's too meta. Like the movie Shrek. Mm -hmm, Sure. (laughs) Anyway, box office. This had a budget of $60 million. Uh, That's low, I think. Yeah, 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 ish, yeah. yeah. I mean, now, but not maybe not as much then. And it had a box office return of $487.9 million. That's a lot. I agree. And not only that, it was the biggest selling DVD at the time in excess of 10 million. Couldn't do that these days. Definitely Sell a DVD. Not. No, you definitely can't. But I think the most important thing about this movie is for DreamWorks is that they had a franchise. This is what they were looking for. Right, of course. This yeah. might, if this didn't work, that mm-hmm. might have been it. I can't believe we couldn't get a sequel out of The Prince of Egypt. <laughs> oh, God. Could we got... say they went back into the desert? I don't know. Two Princes of Egypt? Oh, nice. You could use the song. You could use the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jeffrey Katzenberg even stated as much. He said that the film not only saved the company, financially speaking, it gave DreamWorks Animation an image that allowed it to make Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, and How to Train Your Dragon. I guess in a lot of ways it gave them also the DreamWorks face. That's true. True. <laughs> and it gave us that new DreamWorks introduction where you fly through all the DreamWorks characters or or whatever happens and everybody hates that, I think. Oh, the now. new one, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sh- Shrek, isn't it? You better believe it's Shrek. Are you looking forward to Shrek too? Well, I certainly had a Shrekingly good time for the, with this one, so. Yeah. Maybe. But the, maybe there'll be diminishing Shrek turns. That's true. For the sequels. Mason. Shrek diminishing Shrek turns? Very good, Mason. Mm. Anyways, please come back next week for Shrek 2, but maybe you'll like. Please come back. We're begging. We're begging this. 20, <laughs> we're begging. 2023, don't correct us, and we're begging. <laughs> And you can actually see all of these early if you head over to bigsandwich.co where Ben and Lawrence, they get it done and they go, here's this video early and it goes up there, doesn't it, Mason? Incredible, that's right. There's also bonus podcasts. Oh, we've added more animations. <laughs> no, and wild stuff. no, there's, there's, no, there's not. Okay, maybe we could lie. <laughs>
And, th- and we made a karaoke dance party at the end. <laughs> Everyone's in it. Uh, so there's also bonus podcasts. There's movie commentaries. Uh, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, which is back in full swing, by the way. Hell yeah. That comes out there a day early on Sunday as opposed to Monday. And, of course, all of this is ad-free because it's like our private Patreon, isn't it, Mason? That's right. What did you think of Shrek? Do you think Shrek holds up? Shrek, what do you think? Shrek? Oh, we're asking Shrek. Yeah, Shrek, what do you think? Hi, everybody. I think he'd be biased. I don't oh. think we should trust his opinion. Okay, you're right. Shrek, shut up. No! Get out of here. Bye-bye. We're sick of it, but we'll see you next week for Shrek 2. And grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. We'll see you next Shrek, you should say, Mason. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. See you later. Grab that Shrek. <laughs> that, that's also easy for people to understand. I think so. A lot yeah. of people think I'm saying different words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab that Shrek. Shrek.